Dance Arts of Columbia provides fitness fun for everyone from three years old to adult. Dance Arts is a good environment where the friendly staff makes you feel comfortable. Dance Art feels that dance is an art form that you can experience firsthand by learning tap, jazz, modern, musical theater, lyrical, and ballet. Dance Arts urges you to enjoy a sense of accomplishment while getting fit and having fun. For class information, call 875-1569. Dance Arts of Columbia, serving Columbia since 1979. Good morning and welcome to Radio Friends. This is Friday, September the 2nd as we go into Labor Day weekend. I believe we've come full circle there again. We've got two topics, Saturday morning science and um, the Boonslick Folk Festival. Let's start first of all with Connie Shea, the Boonslick Folk Festival. Hi, Paul. Good to have you here. Thank and you. And congratulations, by the way, on that quilt show that you had several Thank you. weeks ago. Thank you. Uh, you had a nice turnout. We had a beautiful crowd. We had beautiful quilts in, in we, Fayette. Yeah. In Fayette, and we made a thousand dollars to go to our local food pantry, which really needs it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, congratulations Thank on you. that because Thank it you. was a very, very nice show. Thank you, and, and thank the you fact for coming. that you that you raised a thousand dollars and turned it over to the food bank is just wonderful. Well, that's that was the whole goal when we started. This was. To, make money for the food bank. Yeah, but now here, you're, you're here to talk about the Boons Lake Folk yes. Festival, yes. which is uh, being held on Labor Day, on this Labor coming Day. Monday. What, oh. what goes on? Oh, it's a step back in time, Paul. Uh, this is our ninth year, and we've been doing this, and kind of have it down to a science, but so that it doesn't get stale, I have a bunch of new people coming this year that I'm really excited about. We have, uh, we have a lady coming for rug hooking. We have another lady coming to do bobbin lace. We to have do a what? bobbin lace, you know, where they take the little bobbins and flip them around, and you think, how on earth do they make this? Okay. It's beautiful okay. lace. Uh, we have um, we have a gentleman coming up from Springfield who has an old German tradition of rye coiled baskets. If you've seen bee skeps, uh -huh. he makes that kind of a basket. He takes straw and wraps it. It's beautiful work, and he's going to be there. This year, we're co we are co-sponsored by the Missouri State Parks. Okay. They have decided that we are for real and they want to be our partners. So well, that's really nice. Congratulations It's Congratulations really great. On that. It's really good. It took us nine years, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but okay. it's really great that they're helping us and they're, they're been a tremendous help to us. Yeah. We'll have a six-passenger shuttle to bring people back and forth from the parking lot. Okay, so that's going to be in modern time, the six-passenger yeah, shuttle. Yeah, it's a golf cart. Is what once it is. You, once, once you, you get, get there, there, you step back in you're time. You're back in time. All and everybody will be in period we're, clothing? We're in period clothing. We have lots of period music. We even have period food. Our vendor will uh, be cooking buffalo brats and buffalo burgers. Okay. And we have all types of the old period type, craftsmen, spinning, weaving, uh, blacksmith, um, I'm trying to think of some of the other arrowheads, mm -hmm. um, just about anything you can, quilts on display. Okay, so where is it going to be? It's at the Boone's Lake State Historic Site, which is the site where Daniel Boone's sons used to mine salt. The site is actually uh, mentioned in Lewis and Clark's journals. It's a very historic area. It's not a large area, but it's a beautiful area. So how do you find it? It's on, on Highway 187, which is just off of 87, which is... 10 miles north of Boonville or 10 miles south of Glasgow. Okay. So if you go to Boonville, you would head north on 87 for about 10 miles. If you're coming from Glasgow, you would head south about 10 miles. And will there be signs? There leading? will be signs. There are both MoDOT signs, lists showing the directions to the park, plus we will have our festival signs out. Okay, and if people want more information, where Call do they me. go for it? Call me. All right, and you want to give that number? 660-248-2011. You don't have a website, do you? Uh, no, we do okay. not. Okay, because, well, back in those days, they didn't have well, websites. Well, I was going to say, I stepped back in time, <laughs> and I fit right in, Paul. <laughs> All right, Connie. The Connie Shea, thank you so much. Thank it, you, Paul. It'll be this coming Monday. It's one day only. One day only, Labor 10 day. to 4. Labor Day, September the 5th. 5th. 10 to 4. 10 o'clock in the morning till and 4. I forgot the most important thing. Yeah. It's all free. All free. No okay. admission. Okay. All right. Thank you. It. Thank you, Connie. Now we're going to talk about something that happens Saturday, this coming Saturday, tomorrow, September 3rd, and that Saturday morning science. And this is the first Saturday morning this is science. The first Saturday science of the fall, yes. Yeah. Mark Johnson, good to have you back yeah, with good us to be again. Back. And you brought along Angela Speck. Good to have you here, Angela. Yeah. The topic of this morning, Saturday morning science, is what? Uh, I'm going to explain to you why you shouldn't believe your horoscope. Now, do you realize 
millions of people every morning go to the paper, they pick up that paper and they read their horoscope and some people plan their day around what they see in the paper. And they shouldn't do that. And if they come to my talk, they'll find out all the reasons why it's all nonsense. Our horoscope is all nonsense. Yes. And you said it, 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 we're not even under the sign that we... That's right. When the zodiac was set up, it was set up as a, a timekeeping system by the uh, Babylonians. <clears throat> and The Babylonians set up the zodiac? Yes. Okay. And How many years ago? About 4,000. Okay. And the problem is that as we move through space, the sun moves through space, the earth moves around the sun, as we move through space, where the stars are changes. And I'll talk about how that happens and, and why that means that your star sign then changes. So although my birthday is in June, I'm officially Gemini, um, the sun would have been in Taurus when I was born. So, so you're never the sign that you think you are. And for those people who are... Um, I'm a Libra. Well, Ooh. that would make you a Virgo. But there's actually 13 signs, not 12. So I'll talk about how that came about. What's the 13th what? sign? Ophiuchus. Ophiuchus. Mm -hmm. So all these years I've been thinking I'm a Libra. I'm not a Libra. That's right. And according to you, it doesn't make any difference anyway. That's right. Okay. <laughs> so now give me some of the reasons that you're going to give people that this is all fake. Um, well, first of all, Whatever you're reading, it has nothing to do with where the planets and the sun are. The idea behind the uh, behind astrology and horoscopes is you chart where are the planets, where is the sun, relative to the background stars. But that is changing all the time, and they're not plotted relative to the background stars. They're plotted relative to how the background stars would have been 4,000 years ago. So the astrologers don't take account of that. Okay, so 4,000 years ago, you're saying that it was no. right. I'm saying that it's not right anyway. So what, what are the causal effects? And for instance, if you are a Scorpio, then your ruling planet is Pluto. That means that 4,000 years ago, you didn't have a ruling planet because we didn't find Pluto until 1930. But it was still there. Just because we didn't find planet. it didn't mean it wasn't there. But it means you couldn't use it as okay. a ruling planet. Now, wait, wait, wait. The moon affects the tides, yes. right? Now, you're not going to debunk that. No. Okay. Uh, but what it doesn't affect us on a personal level. Oh, what about full moon? There, 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 there's more violence during full moon? No, that's not true. Oh, that's, that's not, not true. true? If you oh. actually look at it, there's no more births on a full moon. There's no more violence on a full moon. Now, that may be different if you go back historically because there's a difference in the amount of light. And uh, I imagine you could probably find there's more crime at new moon when it's dark, when people can't see you, well, you know if what? you go back in time to before we had streetlights. Okay, well, you go, 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 and, go and find out about it Saturday morning science. But I think... Planting your garden to the phase of the moon has something to it. And you're going to say it doesn't. What would it have to it? Oh, it, it does. You plant, you plant certain vegetables by the phase of the moon with the old farmer's almanac. It gives you more light to work by. That's about <laughs> it. <laughs> okay. Saturday morning science tomorrow. What time? 10.30. 10.30. Okay. But don't ever let the full moon hit you in the face when you're trying to sleep at night. It'll make you... It'll make you... <laughs> <laughs> You're shaking your head. My father told me that. Director Travis McMillan. I always listen to my dad. Travis McMillan's our director of Reynolds Journalism Institute, Audio Pad Acres, our floor director, David Ordway, and our assistant producer and guest coordinator, Uncle James Mauser. To watch this again or listen to it, kbia.org. Click on the Radio Friends vodcast or podcast. Bye-bye.